Good evening. Welcome to God's house, those of you who are worshiping in person and those of you who are also worshiping at home this week as we celebrate uh, the baptism of our Lord, as we continue with our sermon series on, O Lord, How Shall I Meet You, looking at uh, John the Baptist today as Pastor Patterson brings us God's Word. Obviously, welcome to stay for Bible study uh, this evening following the worship service. Also, uh, this this particular service and then the Sunday services will be the last opportunity to uh, sign up for the Right to Life signature ad. If you want to do that, that table is in the gathering space. There are many who are in need of our prayers uh, since uh, worship on Sunday. Linda Arnholt is um, hospitalized uh, right now at Columbus Regional. Um, she has been undergoing um, some tests, but it does look like she has cancer. Uh, so we would encourage you to lift up Linda and add her to your prayer list. Also, um, Kathy Hoover, um, her cancer has also returned, and so please add her to your prayer list. And then we also lift up the family of William Nolting, who entered into glory um, on Monday night, and his funeral will be here at the church at uh, 11.30 on Friday, uh, with calling beginning at 10.30 on Friday morning. Certainly, we lift up our nation in prayer um, this day, as we often do, uh, praying that there would be uh, peace in our land. On this baptism of our Lord um, Day, we will be following the printed order of service, so I invite you to turn to hymn 404 for our opening hymn.
I invite you to stand for the baptismal remembrance service. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, there is one body and one Spirit, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. As Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, A reading from Romans chapter 6. Paul writes, What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin still live in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried therefore with him by baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. For one who has died has been set free from sin. Now if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. In holy baptism, we are forgiven our sins and granted a new life in Christ our Lord. We solemnly renounce the devil and all his works and all his ways. We confess the gift of faith in God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I ask you anew, do you renounce the devil and all his works and all his ways? Do you believe in God the Father Almighty? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? Yes. 
Is it your earnest purpose to continue steadfast in this faith and in the promise of your baptism and as a member of the church to be diligent in the use of the means of grace and prayer? Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and the Spirit and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Let us pray. Father in heaven, at the baptism of Jesus in the Jordan River, you proclaimed him your beloved son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit. Make all who are baptized into his name faithful in their calling as your children and inheritors with him of everlasting life through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading for this baptism of our Lord Day from the first chapter of Genesis. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day. And the darkness he called night. And there was evening and there was morning, the first day. This is the word of the Lord. I invite you to stand as we speak together the Alleluia and verse. Alleluia. You are my beloved son. With you I am well pleased. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. John, that is John the Baptist, appeared, baptizing in the wilderness and proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And all the country of Judea and all Jerusalem were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair and wore a leather belt around his waist and ate locusts and wild honey. And he preached, saying, After me comes he who is mightier than I, the strap of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And when he came up out of the water, immediately he saw the heavens opening and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my beloved Son, with you. I am well pleased. This is the gospel of the Lord. Lord. Congregation may be seated, boys and girls at home. It's time now for the little sermon. Well, boys and girls at home, thank you for watching today as we Talk about the baptism of our Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ. He himself was baptized by John the Baptist in the Jordan River. Jesus was about 30 years old when that happened, and his public baptism began his public ministry. And Jesus would live and work in ministry for about three years, and then be crucified his major work, crucified to pay sin's penalty for us by dying on the cross. But he didn't stay dead. He was raised from the dead on Easter Sunday, the third day, and he lives and reigns forever. And we too, who believe and are baptized into him, will also live forever. There's one thing about the baptism of Jesus at the Jordan River that I want to focus on today. And that is the miraculous revealing of who Jesus really is. Now, if you think about this, when you are trying to make a new friend or getting introduced to someone new, you don't know much about that person, do you? You have to ask some questions. You have to have some conversation in order to find out what this person is like, what they enjoy, what they don't what kind of books they like to read or television shows they like to watch. 
In the case of Jesus, God wants us to know something very, very special. And so, He gives us a picture, some happenings during the baptism of Jesus that make us remember that Jesus is not just an ordinary human being. No, He is the divine God, Son of God Himself. He is the second person of the Holy Trinity. And the way that God does this is when Jesus is baptized, some pretty incredible things happen. First of all, we see a dove coming down from heaven. Something that looks like a dove. And that it is God the Holy Spirit. And it lights or stays on Jesus' shoulder. Then we hear a voice from heaven. And the voice from heaven, as we heard it earlier, said, You are my beloved Son. With you I am well pleased. That was God the Father speaking to Jesus, God the Son. And so at the baptism of Jesus, we have an epiphany, a revealing, a showing forth that this Jesus is not just a man, but he is God. God himself comes, human flesh and blood, to live under God's law perfectly, to die sacrificially on the cross for your sin and mine, and to rise victoriously from the grave, not just as a spirit, but with his body as well. So today is a very special day as we think about who Jesus really is. He is truly God in human flesh and blood. Come to be our Savior. Well, boys and girls, thank you for listening so carefully. Let's fold our hands, bow our heads, and we'll pray a prayer together. Dear Father in heaven, we thank and praise you for revealing to us that Jesus is more than just a man. That he is truly God the Son. Help us always have faith. That because of Jesus. Our sins are forgiven. And our home is in heaven. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Thank you, boys and girls. We continue now by singing the hymn of the day.
Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. Thus began God's perfect work of creation. God spoke and light flashed into the darkness to create new life. But creeping into that perfect light and life came the hellish darkness of human doubt, rebellion, sin, and death. Generation after generation, God's chosen people waited for Him, the Messiah, the promised Christ, the Savior, who would forever bring light and life to a fallen earth. And so it was that in that specific and very factual period of human history, during the reign of Roman Emperor Caesar Augustus, when Quirinius was governor of Syria, that a young virgin, Mary, gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger in the little town of Bethlehem. And an angel of heaven announced this gospel birth to simple shepherds in the fields nearby, saying, For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. You would think that that kind of news would make the rounds very quickly and that this Christ child would have a very public life. But it was not to be so, at least for 30 years. He quickly faded into obscurity and grew up in a small, insignificant little town called Nazareth. It was not until 30 years of age that Jesus actually began his ministry. He would be dead at 33. But his life, his teaching... His ministry, His crucifixion, and His victorious resurrection from the dead would restore that long prophesied light and life that had been lost in the Garden of Eden long before. As the Gospel writer, St. John, tells us about Jesus, in Him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, And the darkness has not overcome it. But who would prepare people to actually receive and believe in Jesus? Who would begin the conversation that would lead to repentance and faith in the Christ? Well, the name of that man was John, forever known as John the Baptist. Born six months earlier than Jesus, he was himself a miracle baby. His birth, too, was announced by an angel. His conception, like that of Jesus, was unusual and miraculous. He was born very late in life to his parents, the priest Zechariah and his wife Elizabeth, who up till now had not been able to have children. John actually first met Jesus in utero while both were still in their mother's wombs. Mary came to visit Elizabeth, who was a relative. And Luke tells us that when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, the baby, John, leaped in her womb. Indeed, as promised to Zechariah, John was indeed filled with the Holy Spirit, even from his mother's womb. Scripture tells us that young John grew strong, became strong in spirit, and he was in the wilderness until the day of his public appearance to Israel. Growing up in the wilderness. And so 30 years after their births, both Jesus and John the Baptist appear again on the biblical stage. This time they are at the Jordan River. John, all scruffy from hard desert living, 
eating locusts and raiding wild bee hives for honey, wearing the clothing of a desert prophet, camel hair, and a crude leather belt. He is ready to meet and greet the Lord Jesus because he understands his calling. He, John the Baptist, is the one who comes in the spirit and power of the great prophet Elijah. He is God's messenger. The voice of one calling out in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord and make his path straight. And his message? Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Jesus knows that the Messiah is coming and that he, John, is the messenger God has sent to prepare the people to receive and to believe in that Messiah, the Christ, meaning the anointed one who will save his people from their sins. O Lord, how shall I meet you? How welcome you aright? John the Baptist says, Repent and believe and testify. Repent, says John. Turn from your sins, confessing them to God the Father. Believe. Trust in the Messiah whom God has sent as your Savior. For in Him is found the kingdom of God. In Him is forgiveness of sins. In him is a new and restored relationship with God through faith. In him is eternal salvation, leading to the boundless joy of heaven. Yes, John the Baptist says, repent and believe. And he testifies, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Just who is this Messiah? This long-awaited bringer of light and life who comes to break the power of darkness. Who is the Christ, the Son of God? Well, as Jesus is baptized by John in the Jordan River, God himself, God the Father, clearly and powerfully testifies. Jesus of Nazareth is this Messiah, the Christ of God. This baptism is another epiphany, another revealing of Jesus as the Messiah. As Jesus is baptized, the heavens are literally torn open and the Holy Spirit descends on Jesus in the form of a dove. The voice of the Heavenly Father pierces the day. This is my beloved Son, you are my beloved son, with you I am well pleased. There is no doubt, God the Father says, this is my son. John also testifies. He testifies that Jesus is the promised Messiah that everyone's been waiting for. John says, this is he of whom I said, after me comes a man who ranks before me, because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but for this purpose I came baptizing with water, that he might be revealed to Israel. And John bore witness, I saw the Spirit descend from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, He on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I have seen and have borne witness that this is the Son of God. So how indeed shall we greet the Lord? How should we welcome him rightly? John would tell us, Repent, believe, testify. Of course, to repent is not simply to say, I'm sorry. 
but rather to confess and agree with God and his law that we are lawbreakers, sinners who have done and thought and said that which is evil. To repent is to change our ways. Stop doing the wrong and to start doing the right. To believe is to trust in Christ Jesus as the one who alone has paid sin's penalty for us through his death on the cross. Pastor Bauman told us last week, to have faith is to say, for me. Jesus died for me. Jesus rose from the dead for me. Jesus lives to give heaven to me. For God so loved me that he sent his only begotten son. That's what it means to believe. And to testify. To testify is to tell the Jesus story over and over again. To live in that story. To live in faith, in prayer and in love. To point not to ourselves, but to the one who has saved us. To the one who will give us eternal life beyond the grave. To the one whose promises are sure in this life and in the life of the world to come. To testify is to use our voices to teach and to sing, to pray. To use our time and our talents and our resources to point people to Jesus. Just like John the Baptist did. To testify is to be a voice in the wilderness of this world proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. In Jesus, the Messiah. Repent. Believe. Testify. May God put a little bit of John the Baptist in every single one of us, as we too serve as God's messengers, the voices of those calling out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. God grant it. Amen. Peace of God that passes all understanding, guard and keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus to life everlasting. Amen. We join in singing the hymn of response. Please stand as we confess our sins. Let us pray. Father of mercies and God of all consolation, come to the aid of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may attend to your word, confess our sins, receive your forgiveness and grow into the fullness of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Redeemer. As the baptized children of God, let us come before our Heavenly Father, seeking His forgiveness. I, a poor sinner, plead guilty of all sins. I have lived as if you did not matter, and as if I mattered most. 
Your name I have not honored as I should. My worship and prayers have faltered. I have not let your love have its way with me, and so my love for others have failed. There are those whom I have hurt and those whom I have failed to help. My thoughts and desires have been soiled with sin. I am sorry for all of this and ask for grace. I want to do better. Amen. God be merciful to you and strengthen your faith. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God to all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I do forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you have revealed your Son to us in the wondrous epiphany in the Jordan. So also you have revealed your name and blessing to us in holy baptism, declaring us your beloved heirs. Grant that we may die daily die to sin and rise to newness of life, living with joy as your baptized children, testifying of your Son, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Lord, in your mercy. Preserve your holy church here and scattered throughout the world. Give steadfast faith to all Christians by the preaching of your word and through the holy sacraments. And send laborers into your harvest. Enliven the love of your saints to bear one another's burdens and to show mercy toward those outside of the church. Quicken us in the hope of eternal life in Christ Jesus. Lord, in your mercy. Preserve the family, especially all Christian homes. Turn husband and wife toward one another in love. Equip fathers and mothers for their holy duty as teachers of the faith. And preserve all children in the saving faith and certain promises of their baptism unto life everlasting. We ask for your blessing upon all our family members. Rejoicing with Adam Arnholt and his family as he celebrates his 10th birthday. O Lord, in your mercy. Preserve our nation, O Lord, its leaders and those who serve for the good of our people and for their protection. We pray that you would grant peace in Washington and also peace to us in our time. O Lord, for you alone fight for us. Lord, in your mercy, give comfort and relief to those who are sick, depressed, tired, anxious, near death, and those who grieve, including Linda Arnholt, Kathy Hoover, Charlotte Williams, Ben Pence, Francisco Rendon, Elizabeth Scheidt, Carl Forster, Jim Newton, Joanna Soto, Ron Havener, Rosemary Albright, Tim Sarver, Danielle Miller, Deanna Followell, Riley Bennett, Scott Rutherford, Andy Havener, Nora Heath, Emmy Brooks, Tim Isley, Chris Hyatt, Teresa Palmer, Mark Moore, Julie Phillips, Evelyn Rich and Fran Sapper, and Connie Ball, and the family of William Nolting. O Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray. Trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We continue now with the service of the sacrament on page 194. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. Is meet and right so to do. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, 
through Jesus Christ our Lord. For at his baptism, your voice from heaven revealed him as your beloved Son, and the Holy Spirit descended on him, confirming him to be the Christ. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. O Christ, the Lamb of God.
Please rise for the communion blessing. Body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in body and soul unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. O give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. And his mercy endureth forever. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Bless we the Lord. Thanks be to you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Amen.